everybody who's joined us on by way of Zoom and Facebook and YouTube. I want to say welcome to the best place on earth is God's church or the church of Jesus Christ. Wherever Christ is being taught is the best place on earth right now. Uh, so we would like to open up our devotion. If you would uh, turn in your Bibles to Psalms 34. And while you're turning there, I would like, just like to say I'm, we're praying for our pastor, hoping that he returns to us uh, real soon, hoping that he's feeling much better. Uh, Psalms uh, 34, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make uh, her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof. And be glad, me, and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. I just read to you uh, Psalms 34. Uh, one through five, may the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his most holy word. Good evening, y'all. Could we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord allowing us to come and do the Bible study. Bless our pastor. Bless all that's here in the church. And thank you, Lord, for allowing me to pray and to do the prayer. And thank you, Lord, for blessing all those that's here in this church. As far as my brother Ronnie, Reverend Dan Jones, Sister Bell, and all of us here. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together and hear a word from the one who's going to bring the word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. We're so glad to be here and to see you here. Thank you so much, Deacon Griffin. Thank you, Deacon Felix Kelly, so much for the uh, intro and the uh, devotional period. Right now, what we want to do, if it's all right with you, is to have our prayer list so we can take time to stop and look at those who are standing in the need of prayer and who have requested special prayer, if you will. And if you look at your screen on uh, Zoom, you can see some of the names and we'll just recite those names for you. Brother Deacon, if you can please give us some, some nice music in the background as we kind of go through these names. Brother Ben Jones is here and uh, he's a musician aficionado, so thank you so much. <laughs> yes, indeed. As we look at the names of those, uh, the old songwriter used to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But uh, I need thee every hour, oh precious Lord. 
If you look, you'll see that we're praying for our pastor and his family, Pastor Cannon and Sister Minnie Cannon and Sister Tammy Bratcher. We're praying for the Cornerstone Church family, all of the families here at the Cornerstone Church. We're praying for the Cornerstone Christian Academy and staff. Uh, we're still lifting up, of course, Sister Julia Wilson and family, uh, T.J. Hooker and family, T.J. Calhoun and family. We're praying for Sister Loretta Felton and family, Alfred Dyer Sr., DeLois Bean. We're praying for Reverend Dan Jones and family. He's here with us tonight. Sister Dominique Trotter and family. We're lifting up Sister Joanne Barbosa and family. Dr. Chandra Williams, she's had a series of, of uh, people who have passed on unexpectedly. We're praying for Dr. Williams and family. We're praying for Sister Regina Allen as she continues to mourn the passing of her mother and family. Herman, Tina Graham and family, we're praying for you. We're praying for Brother Aaron Rowland, uh, who's had a series of illnesses. We're lifting him up. We're praying for Michael and Charlotte Scott and family. And then the family of Kevin Smith. Brother Kevin Smith, one of our members, went to be with the Lord a few weeks ago. We're lifting him up. Yes, sir. We're lifting up his family, that is. Mark Brooks and family and Winnie Tomlin and our own beloved Deacon Fred Starks. We're lifting you up, Brother Starks. Uh, his wife just went to be with the Lord. And so his daughter, Starla, Star, uh, Starla Copeland, and his son, Titus Starks, they're here with their dad and uh, lifting him up, strengthening him. And it's, of course, it's difficult at this time uh, with funerals because we're limited, where we can only have 10 family members. So it's a difficult time. But we're praying for you, Fred, and we're with you, Brother Starks. We're praying for Michelle or Michael Johnson. These are just some of the special prayer list. And then when we go to our sick and shut-in list, we've got some dear precious saints who've been on the list for a while. They've been on there for a long time. The Lord has been with them and blessing them, but they've been there for a minute. Mother Gussie Freeman, we're praying for you. Mother Virginia Chestnut, we're lifting you up. Deacon Carlton Trotter, the Lord has been with him. Doctors have said something, but God has the last word. Amen. And so we love you, Brother Trotter, and we're praying for you. Sister Georgia uh, Robinson, we're lifting you up. Deacon Matthew Worthington, he's had a battle for quite a while, but we're praying for you, Deacon, and we believe in the healing hand of God. We're praying for you and Sister Barbara. James Riley. We're praying for you. Catherine McDaniels, we're lifting you up right now in the name of Jesus. Deacon Robert Watson, we love you and we're praying for you. He's been such an integral part of this church, part of the Christian education ministry. We're lifting you up, Deacon. Sister Dorothy King Jernigan, you have our prayers. Lucille Mosley, we're praying for you. Yes, we miss you. Sister Mildred Trailer, and we're praying for you. Milton Owens, you are in our prayers. Christopher Grisby, we're lifting you up. Jasmine Williams, we are praying for you. And there are even other names that might need to be added. There might be, I'm sorry, sister, Mother Jenkins, Mother Gladys Jenkins, we're praying for you. 94, 95 years old. The Carson family and uh, Brother Calhoun and the Carson family, they've uh, been affected by COVID-19. Sister Clara Audrey, we're praying for you. Are there some other names that need to be brought up right now? 
Yes, yes. But we are praying. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the privilege of coming to you in prayer. We thank you, Father, that you prayed for us and you told us to pray one for another. And so, Lord, we come right now lifting these names before you, lifting these petitions before you. Father, pastor, and his family, we thank you, Lord, for his 41 years of pastoral leadership right here at this church. And Lord, we thank you that you are lifting him from his bed of affliction. You are strengthening him every day and making him stronger and stronger. We thank you, Father, for, uh, for his leadership. We thank you, Master, for what you've done through him for this church. And then, Lord, we're praying for all of the families at the Cornerstone Church. We are praying for uh, the CCA staff and family, Father. We're praying for Sister Julia Wilson and her son Greg Jr. and T.J. Hooker. We're, we're praying for T.J. Calhoun, Lord, and we're praying for Michael Woodard, and we're praying for Sister Joanne Green, whose husband is now in your presence, Willie Green. Lord Jesus, we're lifting up Sister Loretta Felton and Brother Alfred Dyer, Sr. Lord, we're lifting up Sister DeLois Bean right now, Lord Jesus, and her family, the Lucas family. We're praying for Reverend Dan Jones, Father. Bless him and his wife, Jackie, and their family. Lord, lift up Sister, we lift up Sister Dominique Trotter right now. Sister Joanne Barbosa, Dr. Chandra Williams and family. We, we pray for Sister Regina Allen, oh God. You know how she's going through the grieving period. Herman and Tina Graham and family. We're praying for Aaron who's had several surgeries, oh God. Bless him and strengthen him. Lord, we lift up Michael and Charlotte Scott and the family of Kevin Smith and Lord, help Mark Brooks and his family, Winnie Tomlin, and Lord, we lift up our beloved brother Fred Starks. During this period of bereavement, he had been married so long to Sister Janie, and so Lord, we lift him up, we lift up Starla, we lift up Titus, we lift up Reverend Dr. Ed Copeland. Lord, be with them and show us how we can comfort them during this period of grief. Lord, we lift up Michael Johnson, and Father, we ask that you'll be with Sister Gussie Freeman. We thank you for Virginia Chestnut, Lord, only you know the lives that she has touched. So bless her, Father, in her state right now in the nursing home. Thank you for Deacon Carlton Trotter, who was always willing, ready, and able to help here at the church. And if his health prov provided, he would do it right now. So, Lord, you just continue to be with him and strengthen him. We know what doctors say, but you, King Jesus, are our creator. And so we trust you. Bless Brother Trotter and his wife and his family. Georgia Robinson, lift her up, O oh God. Matthew Worthington has had a long battle, God, but we know that you're in the battle with him. Comfort him, be with him, strengthen he and Barbara, strengthen their marriage, strengthen their relationship with you. And then James Riley, we bring him before you, my Lord. Sister Catherine McDaniels is having a battle right now. But God, we know that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And then, Lord, be with Deacon Robert Watson. We just thank you. Oh, how we thank you for his ministry here at the Cornerstone Church for many, many years as Christian Ed Director. So be with him, oh God, and his son and his family. Bless Sister Dorothy Jernigan, Father, be with her. Lucille Mosley, Mildred Trailer, we miss her. Father, be with her, allow her to get stronger, allow her to heal 
Milton Owens be with him my lord Christopher Grisby and Jasmine Williams and then Lord we ask you to be with Reverend Jones tonight as he brings the lesson open our ears Open our eyes, open our heart to hear and receive everything that you have to say to us. Lord, we'll be ever, ever, ever so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in your name. Amen, amen, amen. Reverend Jones will now come and take us higher. Good evening to all of you who are uh, at home and, and viewing uh, through Facebook, YouTube, and on Zoom. Uh, we thank you for your presence tonight and for hanging in here with us on our Tuesday and Wednesday nights teaching time. Uh, we want to thank our deacons who got us started tonight. Thank Reverend Owens for lifting up those prayer concerns, calling those names of those of us who are in need of prayer. Uh, when we were on the uh, prayer line for the last couple of days, um, I think we all agreed that we're in a time right now uh, when there is no way around it. Uh, we have to make sure that we set aside time to talk to the Lord about the circumstances that we are facing. Uh, if we try to handle them by ourselves, we'll just wind up getting ourselves into a worse situation than what we are. So prayer is certainly the key to unlock the door uh, and figure out what the Lord is saying to us all during these difficult times. Uh, even as Reverend Owens was praying, uh, the Lord was answering prayers. Um, even while the names were, were being called, the Lord was delivering. Uh, Chris uh, Grisby was, he was here with us on Sunday. Uh, I'm just saying if we, if we determine to pray as the Lord has commanded us to, he'll pray, he's promised to answer. And that's what we'll continue uh, to do. Well, I guess it was about maybe almost a month ago, maybe three, four weeks ago, uh, Reverend Miller preached a, a sermon here that uh, kind of got us moving in in a certain direction. He lit a fire uh, here, uh, talking about um, the issue of of depression. Is that right? Uh, and then uh, for those of us who've been on the prayer line, Pastor Bates, uh, for the last, uh, I believe, three weeks. Uh, dealing with the 142nd number of the Psalms uh, has helped us, uh, as many of us uh, have all kind of thoughts uh, during this particular time. Look, we're all facing something that we've never faced before. Uh, this, this pandemic uh, has kind of leveled the playing field between the rich and the poor. Uh, doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter how healthy you are, uh, doesn't matter where you live, uh, we all have a common concern right now. Uh, and if we're not careful, 
uh, we can easily find ourselves in a state of depression. Uh, because let's face it, uh, we really don't know how it's going to turn out. But we have to remember that we do know something. We know the one who does know. Uh, we know the God who, uh, in spite of what appears to be chaos, still is holding the reins in his hands and has it under absolute control. Uh, a few Wednesdays ago, the Wednesday before last, uh, we were uh, looking at the Lord's prophet Elijah uh, in the book of First Kings. Uh, chapter uh, 19, and how he found himself the Lord's greatest prophet, how he found himself in a state of depression. I see someone looking at me. Uh, we want to we want to qualify that uh, other than the Lord himself, who is Jesus Christ. But when the Bible speaks of the law and the prophets, Elijah is normally the one that they refer to as the, the lead prophet. But Jesus Christ, of course, uh, is the greatest prophet of all, and even more than that. But Elijah, yeah, 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. Uh, and we, uh, we looked at the, uh, it really starts uh, around verse uh, number three. And the first point that we, we noted is when you face a difficult situation that can lead to depression, what you don't want to do is find yourself running from the problem. This is what Elijah does when he's threatened by Jezebel. He finds himself trying to run from the problem. And we said, how amazing it is. This is what happens when, you, when your thinking gets off kilter uh, and the, the burdens of life start to weigh you down. Your thinking gets off. The chapter before he had just defeated, he had just slain 450 prophets of Baal. Uh, one man, Elijah, takes on 450 prophets. Bold, uh, not afraid. And here he is running from a 100-pound woman. Uh, she has him on the run. Uh, that's how it is when you uh, stop trusting in God and start depending on your own prowess. Could it be that he thought he had slain those prophets in his own power? Uh, did he not remember that it was the power of God that allowed him to win that battle? Why would he desert him now as he had to deal with this wicked woman, Jezebel? What you don't want to do is run from the problem. But he, he decides to run, and we said he had what? He has a pity party. Uh, he, he starts to get down, and when you start to have a pity party and start feeling sorry for yourself, uh, believing that you've been dealt a bad hand, you become irrational in your thinking. Uh, so he asked God to do to him what Jezebel had already promised to do. He asked God to kill him. He wants to commit suicide. He, he wants to die. Uh, he says in, in verse 4 of chapter 19, Is it enough now, O Lord? Look what he says. He says, Take my life, for I'm not better than my father's. He feels he has taken all he can take. I've taken all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. Right? And we said, what? Well, God does not allow the saint 
right, to turn in his resignation papers. Elijah knew that. So for us, you all, you, you can't resign from this work. The work of the ministry is a lifetime trade. Yeah, you, we, once you get on this road, ain't no turning back. Isn't that a song, Miss Bell? No, no turning back? Yeah, you, you cannot resign, and Elijah knew that, so he figured, what's my only way out? My only way out is to die. Well, if he really wanted to die, he could have just stayed there and let Jezebel do what she had promised to do. But he takes off and runs in the other direction. Because of being depressed, his thinking is off. And that's what happened when depression sets in. You cannot gather your thoughts and you become irrational in your thinking. And uh, as we were dealing with uh, the book of First Peter on Tuesday morning, Peter tells us, he says, when you're facing trials uh, and temptations in life, he says, one thing you have to do with your mind is you have to have laser focus. He says, he uses the term to gird up the loins of your mind. You know, gather your thoughts. You cannot have, you can't become scatterbrained. Uh, in the midst of difficult times and difficult situations because you'll find yourself making rash decisions which normally will have a negative domino effect. So get your thoughts together. If you allow your mind to rush with negativity, your actions will follow. Negative thoughts are going to do what? They're going to bring about negative actions right so notice uh, what happens in verse 5 though you discover Elijah did have this pity party and what happens when you get depressed he falls asleep you go to sleep you don't want to get up you get sluggish you just want to lay around you don't want to have no activity you just kind of want to lay around and feel sorry for yourself and that's what Elijah does here and while he's sleeping, uh, the Lord uh, comes and visits him. Uh, he visits him, uh, has an angel to wake him up and tells him to arise and to go and to eat. He eats enough to continue his journey. And we come down to verse number nine. Go ahead and go there in your Bibles, chapter 19 about verse number nine. And it says here, then he came there to what? To a cave. Now Pastor Bates has been dealing with this on Wednesday mornings. This idea of being in a cave. A Christian in a cave. I can say that a cave is no place for, for a Christian. Uh, it, it's dark in a cave. Ain't no light in a cave. Uh, a cave only has one way in and one way out. You don't have very many options when you find yourself in a cave. Uh, but depression will do just that. It'll run you into a hole. Uh, and Pastor Bates is dealing with, with uh, King David, and he's depressed. He's He's down and out, and he finds himself in the cave of Adullam. And here Elijah is in a cave. And not only is, a ca in he, is he in a cave, but look what it says. It says he lodged there. So look, he, I'm in a cave, and I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to live here. I, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to go any I'm not going to try to find a better situation. I'm just going to be satisfied living in this dark cave. But the Bible says the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Look, when you, when you try to run from your problem, the Lord is going to find you wherever you're at. And when God finds you, you know what he's going to do? He's going to confront you. The Lord is going to jam you up. And that's what he does here. He kind of jacks Elijah up, right? He says... 
what are you doing here? And he's not so much talking about the place as he is his state of mental being. He's saying to him, why are you depressed? Why are you hanging your head? Why are you uh, feeling uh, this way, living in a cave? Uh, the problem is you can try to run from your problem, but wherever you run to, you know who's going to catch up to you? Yourself. You can't run from yourself. A pastor reminds us uh, of how a person's character and reputation are. Uh, you try to run away from your reputation, so you catch a plane to the other side of the country. And then six months later, here comes your reputation on a greyhound. Because you cannot get away from yourself. Right, so ain't no sense in trying to run from the issue. The best thing to do is to deal with the issue. When Elijah gets to this place, when he gets to Horeb, he continues his pity party in this cave. And while he's there, the word of the Lord came to him and raised the question. And the question is one of accountability. Uh, because as saints of God, we are going to be held accountable for our actions. The question was, what are you doing here, Elijah? God's concern in this question had more to do with where Elijah was than what he was doing. God wanted to know why he was in this state of depression and in a cave. Why are you hanging your head? Why are you having a pity party? And at this point in Elijah's life, he was what? He was out of place. And look, let, let's be honest, you all. We've all been there. We've all been out of place. We've been at that place that God would not have us to be in our life. And when we're there, look for God to question you as to why, why you are there. He had arrived there without asking God anything about it, right? He, he, he didn't ask God where he should go. He just got up and made that move all by himself. And God does what? God demands a reason for Elijah being where he is. He wants to know, why, why are you here? I didn't tell you to go here. So God calls Elijah onto the carpet. And if Elijah had honestly answered the Lord, he would have said, I'm here in this cave because I'm scared. He's running from Jezebel. That's the real answer. That's the real answer to the question. And we all know if he's scared, he's what? He's not exercising what? Faith. Because faith and fear, you're not going to find them in the same place. At the same time, here he is scared of Jezebel, and he's afraid. Therefore, he's not exercising trust, faith, belief, and what God is able to do for him. He is afraid, and fear will most often be followed by depression. Yeah, if you're scared of something, the next place you're going is into a state of depression. I'm depressed is what he should have said because I am afraid. It's hard to stay depressed if you're trusting in God. It's hard to continue to hang your head if you're really believing that God will do what he said he will do. If you're relying on God's strength, it's hard to stay down. If you are Relying on the power of God is hard to stay depressed because God's ability is able to deliver us every time. Faith in God will pull you through a state of depression because it says, Lord, this situation is in your hands. It's not on me. It's on you. I'm depending on you, God, to deliver me through it. But because Elijah is not trusting God in this particular moment, 
uh, look at what he does. Rather than telling God the truth to the question, what does Elijah do? Let, let's examine his answer. Here's his answer. Look, he doesn't tell God the truth. Look at what he says. He says, I've been very zealous for the Lord. That sounds pretty good, huh? But, but he's running. He says, I've been very zealous for the Lord who is what? He calls him the God of, he recognizes him as the God who has everything under his command, yet and still he's what? He's scared and he's running. And then he starts talking about who? He starts, he starts pointing the finger at other people for the sons of Israel have what? Forsaken thy covenant, torn down thy altars, and killed the prophets with the sword. And he says, what? I am by myself. He's having a pity party. I'm the only one who's doing right. Everybody else done turned their back on you. That's what we do when we get depressed. It's woe is, I'm the only one that's doing right. And we start pointing the finger, what? At everybody else to do what? Make ourselves to make ourselves look better. Even Elijah did this. But that's what we do when, when, when we get scared and we get depressed. We highlight our strengths and we highlight the weaknesses of others so we can confirm that we are all right. When the problem is really with us. Elijah was out of place. Elijah was not trusting God. Elijah was having a pity party. And he was saying that I'm in this thing all by myself. His pity party was one of loneliness. And after God's searching question... He gives Elijah a command. He, 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 he jams him up. He calls him on the carpet. And then he gives him a command. Elijah had been moving at his own will. He had been doing his own thing. He had been calling his own shots. And it was now time for him to do what God wanted him to do. Depression is very, very dangerous. It's debilitating because we're often not trying to hear what God is trying to tell us. Often during our moments of depression, we, we seek him and his counsel. Watch this. After we've tried our own remedy to the problem. After we've kind of made it worse, then we want to hear what God has to say. That's what Elijah does, and he finds himself where? Back in a cave. God says, go forth, stand on the mountain before the Lord. We're dwelling in caves, and God wants us on a mountain. What a contrast we have here. Own self, we find ourselves in a cave. Had he just listened to the Lord from the beginning, he would have found himself on a mountain. Sometimes we just have to wait on God and get his direction for where he wants us to go. As he stood on this mountain, there was a great and strong wind. Bible says it caused the mountain to crack and to break. It says, but the Lord was not in that wind. And it's simply it's illustrating for us that, that God does not always have to do something spectacular for us to hear from him. Right? He doesn't, you don't have to see a bird flying backward in order for God to do something in your life. Uh, a lot of those uh, all, people want to look for something very charismatic to happen in order for God to be speaking to them, but it's not always in the charisma. After the wind ceased, there was what? There was an earthquake, but the Bible says he was not there either. 
After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in that fire. There was the sound of a gentle wind blowing. Elijah covers the face with his mount mantle. A voice raises the same question that he had just asked him. Why are you here? Well, even when we've been mistreated, even when you've been done wrong, God still expects us to respond like we belong to him. Brothers and sisters, life simply is not going to always be fair. So ain't no sense of us thinking that life is always going to be fair. And when things don't happen the way you expect them to happen, start having a pity party. Start hanging your head. You don't want to go into seclusion and don't say nothing to anybody. Life, sometimes it's just going to be like that. Right? Sometimes it's just going to be difficult. Still trust and depend and listen for what the Lord would have you to do. Don't be so quick to use self-help remedies. Life simply is not fair right now. But God still has it under control. And look, God is still going to hold us accountable for what we do. He's going to call us on the carpet. He's going to say, why are you where you are? Is that the place that I instructed you to go? And he's saying here to Elijah, why are you depressed? I was with you when you defeated 450 prophets of Baal. Why are you running from Jezebel? Why are you in this cave? God has a right to confront us as Christians. And when he confronts us, let's give him an honest answer. Let's not remind him of how much ministry we've done on his behalf in the past. Let's not remind him of how we're in church every Sunday, of how we pay the tithe, of how I'm a Sunday school teacher, of how I work on the usher board. God already knows all of that. Let's be honest with the Lord and tell him why we are where we are. Right? God wants an honest answer, and then he can help us to get back to where he wants us to be. He can pull us from the cave and put us upon the mountain. God can do that for us. And after God confronts Elijah, the third thing he does is he commissions Elijah. Yeah, if, if, you, if you handle the confrontation right, and sometimes, you know, God will speak to you. He'll speak to you through your spiritual leader. Uh, uh, your, your pastor will confront you, and if you handle it right, you can go on back into service. And that's what happens with Elijah here. God commissions Elijah because he hears from him. Verse 15 through 21, we see that he's commissioned for further service. Let's look at the verses. It says, and the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you have arrived, you shall anoint Haziel, king of Aram, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat of abel Holah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place, and it shall come about. The one who escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu, shall put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha, shall put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel. Here he is thinking. He's all by himself. Here he is depressed, hanging his head, talking about I'm the only one. Who's serving you, Lord? Had he just talked to God, God would have told him, no, I have 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed the knee. Look, y'all, if you feel in a certain way, you're not in that thing by yourself. You have some brothers and sisters in Christ 
who are there with you. Just turn to the Lord and he will give you direction as to what you, your support system is right there. Not only did he have 7,000, but he had an armor bearer for him in the person of Elisha who would serve him all of his days, right? God has somebody who will help you if you just turn to him before you come up with your own plan to deal with your situation. Bible says he departed from there. He found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, while he was plowing with 12 pairs of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. And Elijah passed over to him and threw his mantle on him. Bible says he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. He said, let me tell my parents that I'm going to follow you. And from that day forward, Elisha followed Elijah and served him for the rest of his ministry. You see, the voice of God told Elijah to take refuge in the wilderness of Damascus. It was there in the wilderness where safety was provided from Jezebel. God knows where to send you, to protect you. It would also put him near ah, the scene of his activity. Elijah was told to anoint Hazel, king of Judah, and Jehu, king of Israel. He was told to anoint Elijah. Those whom Elijah would anoint would destroy the enemies of God. See, sometimes we don't see God's plan. You just have to hear him, and sometimes he don't unfold the whole plan to you. That's what faith is about. Faith is about just taking the next step even when you can't see the next mile. Just go step by step because the Lord sees the full future. Although the devil seeks to destroy a nation and a church, there will be a few who remain faithful to God. God, the Lord, he wanted Elijah to know that he had no need to be lonely. He had no need to be in a state of depression because of loneliness, because he was not alone. God provided Elijah with courage. And not only did he give him courage, he also encouraged him. And there are times when every servant of God, everyone who's trying to do ministry, is going to get discouraged. You're going to be depressed. You're going you're gonna to be down. You're going to feel like, you know what? I'm working and this ain't doing no good. But we need to remember the words of Isaiah. Isaiah, the prophet, he reminds us, though youth grow weary and tired, though young men stumble and fall, they that wait upon the Lord. That's where it is. You, just have, to, you have to be willing to wait on God's timing. He will enable you to renew your strength. He'll have you to mount up with wings as eagles. The Lord is not going to run you into a cave to live. He wants to take you to higher heights. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. So what do you do when you feel yourself slumping into a state of depression, when you're getting discouraged? The first thing you do is don't run from the problem. Don't run from the situation. It, if, if you run from it, you, you're not going to think rationally. Second thing you want to do is you want to Allow your spiritual leader or allow the Lord, who the Lord sends to you to confront you, come defensive, right? And then wait for the Lord to commission you to continue your service. Look to get back on track. Wait on the Lord. So even right now, if you in the midst of this, this pandemic, in the midst of times that seem to be uncertain, uh, 
if you're feeling a little strange, if, if your energy is low, if you're feeling a bit discouraged, uh, look for, you're not in this thing by yourself. You are not the only one. There are other brothers and sisters in your church family. There are other saints across the church fellowship. We're all in the same situation. Yoke up with somebody who can help walk you through these strange times. And look for the Lord to take you to a new level in your spiritual development, even at a time like this. So look for God to move you higher, not to run you into a hole. Don't get discouraged and start falling to pieces. At a time like this, look for brothers and sisters who will encourage you through this difficult time. So, Lord, we, we thank you, O oh God, for the power of your word. We thank you for the example that you have given us through your prophet Elijah and through King David, O oh God, who felt depressed. These servants of yours like Elijah and David became depressed. So, Lord, it lets us know that we, too, can have lapses of depression. But help us, O oh God, God, not to throw in the towel. Help us, O oh God, to learn from these, your men, O oh God. Help us not to run from the problem, but to face the problem and to wait on you, to wait till we hear from you before we make a move. And God, help us to hear your small, still voice. And then to respond that you would be able to use us in service, oh God. Dear God, we pray right now for those who are feeling discouraged, for those who are distressed right now, oh God, for those who are feeling worried, oh God, because of job situations, because of health situations, those who have family members, oh God, who have been affected by this virus, oh God, we pray for them. But help us, oh God, not to feel lonely and to slump into a state of depression, oh God. We're asking you, oh God, to pull us up out of a state of depression, to move us from our personal caves. Help us not to stay there. Move us to a mountaintop, oh God. Lord, help us to look high and not to look low where we can see you, O oh God. Help us to think thoughts that are positive, thoughts that are praiseworthy, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, right now for anyone who might be in a state of depression. Lift them up, O oh God. Lord, we pray a special prayer tonight for our pastor and his family. We pray a special prayer for all those who are sick and shut in. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to renew our joy. Allow it to be in Jesus. Lord, we do believe that if you delivered us from sin, you would deliver us from any other enemy that we might have. So tonight, oh God, we claim the victory. In the name of Jesus, we claim the victory over discouragement. We claim the victory over depression. We pray, oh God, that you would help us to live a life that brings glory to your name. Help us to live like we are children of the King. We thank you, O oh God, that you have given us this privileged position. Help us to live a life that shows the world that we belong to you. We claim the victory in that name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you tonight for your patience.
Uh, we want to remind us while we're here tonight, before we leave, uh, we're going to give before we leave. And if there might be someone tonight who is wondering how you can pay the Lord's tithe or give an offering or give to the pastor support or any of our ministries, please feel free to use one of the following options. Number one, you can just stop by the church. Uh, touchless giving. I guess that's, that sounds pretty good right now. Yeah, touchless giving. You can just drop it in the slot. Drop it in the mail slot or leave it at the office. We have a plexiglass partition between you and, and the hostess, Sister Bell, you can leave it there. We have a partition uh, that is COVID friendly. Uh, you can also uh, leave it with the staff between nine and five. Someone will be here to receive it. Uh, you can also just call the office and we'll have uh, like DoorDash. That's what we'll have like DoorDash. They will come and pick it up from you. You just, just leave the address and we'll put it in one of those smart devices and they'll give us the directions to your home and we will come and uh, pick it up from the place of your choosing. Uh, and you can also give via the Zelle application. Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. You can download that on your smart device. Uh, and the, e the email address that you input in order to use Zelle is C-Stone Can. Uh, that's one word, C-Stone, C-A-N, dot finance. So C-Stone Can, dot finance, at gmail. Dot com. If you type in that email address, it'll go to Cornerstone Zelle account, and your funds will be deposited safely there. If you choose to do it that way, don't forget to fill out an envelope and send your envelope to the church. You can even do it by mail, just denoting where you want those Zelle funds to be applied. Thank you all for continuing to support the finances of the Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church. Your gifts continue to enable us to do work for the kingdom. And we want to say thank you all. We appreciate how you all have been consistent and committed in your giving. Uh, it's, been, it's been over three months, you all, and we have not missed a beat. And uh, don't forget, uh, also, as you continue to give, let's continue to be a support to our pastor. Amen. Uh, he was on the prayer line this morning, and he sounded enthusiastic and energetic. It was so good uh, to hear him this morning, and uh, I'm sure he's, uh, he's even viewing right now. Let's continue to support our pastor. Amen. Uh, Galatians 6 uh, still rings true even right now. Uh, Pastor Cannon is still pushing this ministry forward, and we want to continue to support him uh, through our pastoral support gifts. Amen. So let's do that even right now. You can do it throughout the entire week, but let's be sure to do it as we do uh, and have been doing on Sundays. Be a special blessing to your pastor and his family. Amen. Amen. Any other announcements? Uh, deacons, any other announcements uh, that we need to bring up this time? Uh, we have some of our people from the youth ministry here. Any announcements that we need to? Amen. Deacons ministry. Amen. Again, let's continue to, uh, to stay safe. We know that there have been uh, more stringent uh, rules applied in many of our counties. Uh, so let's do our part. Uh, 
uh, wear your mask, wash your hands, go out only when necessary. Uh, we don't know what the Lord is doing, but let's make sure that we're doing our part uh, so that uh, we can stay safe. Uh, we want to be in prayer for Sister Clara Audrey. Uh, she mentioned on the prayer line this morning that her sister in Houston uh, has uh, uh, contracted uh, COVID. So let's uh, pray for her. But she does say that she's doing better. And we are so thankful that God is answering that prayer. He's healing uh, people from this dreaded disease. Uh, so let's just do our part. Uh, that We want our members to stay healthy. Amen. And we want to continue to pray for our, our members whose families have contracted uh, this vicious disease. Thank you. Uh, you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, any other questions, uh, just direct them to the church staff uh, tomorrow between the hours of 9 and 5. God bless you, and you all have a wonderful evening.